what up nerds in this video i want to cover how we can actually write our own custom main loop and override it inside of godot this can be useful if you want to add some custom functionality to say the scene tree itself now if this video actually helps you and you want to support the channel you can uh, check out my steam developer page that i will link in the description below as well as like and subscribe so to kind of get things started i'm going to do this a little bit differently than what i normally do i'm actually going to do everything over the course of the video as some people have asked me to actually slowly type some of this stuff out and yeah we can try this formula out so let's get started so i'm going to show this in both gd script and c sharp so it doesn't matter which language that you actually end up using the first thing that we want to do is go down here and create a new script and we can call it custom loop for uh, gd to say that it is the gd script version and we're going to inherit the scene tree so we're going to go ahead and create that and then if we go to the documentation and take a look here we actually want to look at the main loop class so when we go in here we can see an example of what we can actually do the few methods that we actually need to override are pretty straightforward initialize you know it gets called when uh, everything is initializing finalize is pretty much the end of everything physics process and process now for this demonstration we're not going to be messing with the physics process or process we're really just going to be tacking on extra properties and signals and things like that all right so when we go into the scene tree well oh, the script itself let's just go ahead and create a var thing equals three all right that's that's all we want to do so then we go to in, in the scene tree create a basic node add a script to it all of this is fine so in here we want to do git tree dot print oh no it was thing and then we want to wrap this inside of a print statement all right so we'll go ahead and save the scene and next we have to actually tell godot that we want to use this script as the new main loop so inside of the run setting and uh, make sure you have advanced settings turned on because if you don't all we get is the main scene we actually want to put this as our name custom loop gd now if we run this it will not work and i'm going to show you it doesn't exist so what we have to do and this is very important is make it a class name and this is actually the name that you will be putting into that uh, dialog box so if I change this to custom loop and run it still doesn't work so if I change this to custom loop and then run it it works as expected so let's go ahead and change it back to GD for the differentiator and now we can do whatever we want we can go ahead and add a signal say thing happened and then from here if we just do git tree and try and look for it it won't work because git tree is going to return the type of scene tree 
So what we can do is cast it inside of here as uh, custom loop GD and then close the parentheses. So this is a cast, it's gonna execute first and now we have access to the signals, properties, methods, uh, anything that we have in that class. Okay, and then you can just do connect just like any other thing, right? All right, so that's how we can kind of do the stuff uh, on the GD script side. And admittingly, it can be a little bit wonky. So to like always have to cast. So something else that we can do, we can create a static function, get main, pass in a node, and that can return the custom loop GD. And we can just do this as a uh, custom loop GD. And it does the casting for us really. Now, because this is a static function, we all we're gonna have to do is call the class name dot get main. And the reason that we're passing in the node is so we can actually get the scene tree itself because this is a static function, all right? So what that means is it doesn't actually live on any instance. So what we can do here is custom loop.gd get main self and it's just like as if we casted it ourselves. All right. So that's something that you can do to kind of uh, make it easier to retrieve. And now let's look at how we can do the same thing, but on the C sharp side. All right. So on the C sharp side, we're just going to create a new script. We want this to be C sharp. It'll inherit from scene tree. And we're gonna call this custom loop CS. All right, and then let's go ahead and create that. Bring it up. And from here, we can do the same thing. Public int, uh, we can just call it say C sharp var, make it our nice getter and setter, and then set it equal to 1000, just so we can see that it is actually working. So we're gonna go back here, go into the project settings, change this to custom loop, oh, change it to CS, and then go into here, this won't work because thing doesn't exist anymore. So we can do C sharp var and it's gonna fail because we need that global class. So we just add that annotation and run it and it works. So the global class annotation is something that's fairly recent, so you used to not be able to do this inside of C Sharp. So you can do the same types of things inside of the C Sharp version that you can with the GScript version, you know, setting custom signals, setting uh, additional properties, setting up your own initialization, your own teardown, and things like that. Um, but we can also do something in C sharp to make it a bit easier to actually get the specific uh, scene tree that we want. So let's take a look at what we can do. Uh, if you're familiar with C sharp, uh, then you'll be familiar with extension methods. So let's go ahead and name this, uh, this scene tree extensions and then we want this to be a, a static class all right and then we'll go ahead and write our 
extension method uh, that we can do the say get tree and we want it to be on the node class where t is going to be a scene tree and all we're going to do is return node dot uh, get tree as t all right so then let's go ahead and go in here and create a new script we want it to be on c sharp inheriting from node is fine we can just name this example all this is fine so far then we'll go in here make sure we're using the correct namespace custom main loop because if you see it automatically added this namespace for me so then we can just do this dot get tree and then it'll be custom loop cs and from there we can get the c sharp variable and do we can do something like that right all right so then i'll go ahead and save that then we can go ahead and do this close that out make sure that we're yep, using the cs one and then when we run we get the same result so that's how you can go about actually replacing the main loop adding some custom functionality if you want to and, and both gdscript and c sharp and just a, another little tidbit potentially quick way to help ease actually retrieving the main loop that you want now some things that you might want to do uh by doing this is maybe you have a very simple say object uh, you, you don't want to instantiate an, a whole node a into the scene tree uh but you do want something that lives throughout the entire lifespan of the application so what you can do is create it inside of your own custom scene tree like in your uh, main loop and everything right so this really kind of opens the door to architecting things in a bit different of a way now obviously if you do need uh, scene tree functionality for your say singleton uh, i would still encourage you to use auto load uh, as well as if you just want something simple and it works just just go with auto loads for singletons as well but really, this is just an alternative approach if you wanted to take it, as well as, you know, tack on some extra things that you wish the scene tree did. Maybe some true global uh, signal, or maybe you have something you want to make sure it gets initialized before the rest of your game. Uh, and, uh, you know, really the sky's the limit here, and Godot really makes it very easy to actually override this behavior. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, and that about wraps everything up. Later, nerds.